people nowadays uh, don't use the terminology deprivation very much. But um, I think the findings have stood the test of time and that dealing with acute stress responses and with antisocial behaviour uh, reflect probably two rather different mechanisms. Um, so that um, because we are social animals, uh, we respond with distress to loss. This is true in infancy uh, and it's true in extreme old age, that relationships are very important to us and so that the effects of either rejection or death of a loved one is a stress. And we now know that this is a pretty general finding um, and we have some beginning understanding of some of the biology that's involved in that. There are a range of strategies that have been used in research to try and look at this and um, to take um, three different examples. Um, one is that um, one needs to think about it uh, in terms of coping. That's to say you have physiological coping and you have psychological coping. So that the, um, the uh, neuroendocrine response to parachute jumping is quite different in experienced jumpers than in people making their first parachute jump. They have adapted and their bodily systems have adapted, so it is no longer the same stress it was first time. And there are plenty of other examples uh, of a similar kind of thing. Now that leads on to um, the second mechanism, uh, or related mechanism, which is that most of the human resilience research has focused on avoiding stress and adversity um, or diminishing its impact in some ways. But if one thinks about this in a biological sense, that's the wrong way to think about it. So that if you want to protect people against infections, you don't put them in a cocoon and stop them ever having contact with bacteria and viruses. You expose them but you expose them in ways that they can cope with. That may happen in terms of natural immunity, or of course it may happen through vaccination. So the psychological equivalent is to say, what can we do to enable children to cope successfully with hazards? Uh, because challenges, stress, that's part of growing up. Uh, and you have to learn to cope, and the only way you learn is through exposure. The third mechanism is where the genetics comes in, where we know that the um, response to acute stresses, I mean the Dunedin work with Caspian Moffat, for example, uh, shows that genetic factors play a role in influencing susceptibility to the environment. And so one needs then to be looking uh, at the genetic pathways that are involved in this um, either increasing risk or increasing protection according to which end you're, uh, you're looking at. So resilience is a real phenomenon, but the ways of looking at it uh, immediately bring you into biological research and they bring you into well, I've mentioned three different sort of mechanisms, but there are, of course, more. What we know much less about is the mediating role of neuroendocrine factors, that there are neuroendocrine uh, effects of a very important kind is not in doubt. But do they account for the behavioral effects? We don't know. They could, but that is research still to be completed.